What's going on guys, hope you're doing well. In today's video, we are going to be going over how to create a user using Firebase. And we're gonna go all over the functionality involved in that. That means signing a user up, logging a user in, and signing a user out. And we're also gonna implement uh, a really important piece of functionality that keeps our user logged in unless they sign out so that they don't have to log in every time. So when we first open up our application, it's gonna open up to this login screen. We're gonna hit sign up. And let's go ahead and see what this looks like here. So I'm going to just say uh, test2 at gmail.com. Make our username Batman. Password just has to be six characters. And then we're going to hit sign up. It's going to dismiss that. And we're going to see a welcome message pop up. And if you guys notice, if I uh, go ahead and run this application again, we're gonna see that it opens up to that login screen. I mean, sorry, to the, uh, the homepage there. And we have the option to sign out here and it presents us back with our login page and then we can go ahead and uh, log back in. And that takes us back to our homepage as well. And uh, what it looks like in the back end is uh, here is where the data is gonna live. This is in Firebase here. So uh, this is the user we just created. We can see his username and his email. And if we hop over to the authentication section, we can see um, the users that we have and the method that they used to sign up. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with what we need to do to uh, get Firebase set up in our application and start coding. Okay guys, so I have Xcode open here. Let's go ahead and create our app. Create Firebase. User, so I'll call it create this. Okay. Now um, we're going to start by creating a couple files. So let's go ahead and do our login controller first. Okay, so we have this. Uh, we're not going to use this class here. So just go ahead and copy the code from it and just paste it in here and change this to login controller. We can go ahead and delete this file, just like that. Okay, and while we're at it, let's go ahead and create our signup controller. Do the same thing. And then let's create our home controller just like this copy and paste that code again and we're gonna make one more file that's gonna be called extensions and we're gonna see how to use that in just a little bit okay so don't uh, do the view controller stuff there we're gonna leave this and just say import UI kit okay so uh, what I want to start with, uh, I'm actually going to get out of this really quick so we can see this guy here. I want to start by creating this login page. And uh, the first thing we need to do is um, <clears throat> make note of the fact that I create my storyboards uh, programmatically or my views programmatically. So here's the function I, do to, uh, I use to do that. So go ahead and type out extension UI view. And I'm going to copy and paste uh, this function in here. Give me one second. And I'm not gonna go over this, but essentially this is the function that I use to uh, add um, sub views to a view. So you guys just pause the video, go ahead and type this out or download the source code, the links in the description and uh, go ahead and get that in your extensions file. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do now is start by creating this login view. and. Uh, first thing we need to do is import our assets into our project. So again, go ahead and download the source code and get the assets imported. One second while I get this done. Doesn't want to do it for me. Bear with me, guys. Here we go. Okay. So this is all we need. All right, now we're going to hop into the login controller. And first, we actually need to set our root view controller. So hop into our app delegate and just type this out. Window equals your window. Window make key and visible. 
window.rootViewController equals UI navigation controller. Actually, let's create this UI navigation controller. Uh, controller equal UI navigation controller. Root view controller, and for now it's going to be our login controller. This is going to change later, and I'll explain why. Um, and then we're going to say nav controller dot navigation bar dot bar style equals dot black and this is so our status bar can be white guys and i know that this doesn't look like it's embedded in a navigation controller but it is and that's so we can go back and forth between our sign up and sign in controllers so now just set our root view controller equal to our nav controller so that's looking good hop back in here and uh Let's go ahead and go in our view did load function and say view.backgroundcolor color equals uh, dot red to see if this is working. So this is our simulator and that's working nicely. Okay, so uh, for a lot of this UI stuff guys, I'm gonna be copy and pasting a lot of code just because I don't wanna waste a ton of time um, writing out all the code with you guys. It's uh, This is not a UI video, it's a create a user video, so let's go ahead and get that done. So, um, need to do some more stuff with our extensions, and I will explain how they are used in a little bit. So, go back and go back into our extensions and paste this function in our UI view extension. This is gonna give us back this text container view that contains an image view, a text view, and a separator view. And you guys can look through the code and see how that works. And then we also need this, uh, UI text field extension that creates our text field for us and we need this UI color extension. So this helps us get that main blue background, okay? So um, like I said, I'm not gonna go over this a whole lot guys just cause it's unnecessary for this video. Um, so let's go ahead and start configuring out this controller. So we're gonna say mark properties and I'll, uh, like I said, let me go ahead and copy and paste the code for this stuff. So I'll do it one by one and explain. So here's the code for our logo image view. Um, if you guys have never created a view programmatically before, this is sort of how you do it. And that just is gonna be the code we need to um, write to set that up there. And for this image, just double click on this uh, image literal guy. Oops, I need to import one more asset. Sorry guys, hold on. There we go. Okay, go back here. And that's looking good. Okay, so now let's um, hop back in here. One second, okay. So now these are all of our uh, container views. So this is um, the container view for our email and we use that function that we wrote in our extensions password container view, and then these are the text fields that go inside of there, okay? So now um, our login button and don't have account button. So we go back down here. So this is the code for our login button, which gives us back this guy. And this is the code for our don't have account button, which gives us back this guy. And um, what we do need to do is create this handle login function. So do that there. Make a new mark for our selectors. And it's going to be at objective C funk handle login. Now we say print handle login. Okay. And then we need this guy as well, handle show sign up. And that looks like this. So this is our, what happens when we click this button and we just want to do navigation controller to push view controller and send uh, and push on that sign up controller to our navigation stack. Okay, now um, the most important guy for now here is gonna be this. It's gonna be this function called configure view components. And um, this is just where we add all the sub views to this view here, guys. So we set the background color, set the navigation bar hidden to true, 
Um, and this is where we use that anchor function that we wrote in our uh, extensions file to add all the constraints that we need to um, get this uh, view set up here. So if we go ahead and run this now, um, we should see our view controller looking like that. And we got to call this function in our view did load method. And that's looking really, really good. So we see handle login, and then when we do this, it pushes on that signup controller. And next, we are gonna start setting up this guy, and it's gonna be even simpler than this because a lot of it is the same. So let's go ahead and get that done now. Okay guys, so as you can see, the signup control is basically the same. We just have this username container view added, and the buttons are a little different. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste all this code here. It's pretty much the exact same that we had in the login controller, except now we have this username container view and this username text field, and then um, we have to add in these new selector functions. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go back into our login controller and just copy these guys. And go back here. This is gonna be handle sign up. This will be, for now, we'll just print handle sign up. And this is going to be handle show login. And this is going to be navigation controller dot pop view controller animated is true. Okay, so if we build that, should be good to go. Okay, so now we just need to add in our uh, configure view components function. And that is going to be almost exactly the same as our login guy. So um, it just now contains this username container view and uh, we changed the anchors around a little bit. So this is now uh, anchored to the bottom of this guy and now password instead of being anchored to the bottom of email is anchored to the bottom of this. So if we go ahead and run this now, that should be the main chunk of our UI. Oop, and again, forgot to call our function, so go up here and say configure view components, run that, and let's check it out. And that's looking super good. So um, now what I want to do is add in the functionality to uh, set up Firebase in our project. So we're going to go ahead and hop into an inter internet browser and get that done now, guys. Okay guys, so um, what we need to do before we move forward is add Firebase to our project. So um, there's, some there's a couple things we need to do online and a couple things we need to do in our Xcode project. So go and open up a browser and go to console.firebase.google.com. And you're gonna need a Google account for this. So if you don't already have one, just go up here, create one and or uh, just select whichever one you want um, in order to do this and you'll be good to go with Firebase. So we're gonna select add project and we're just gonna um, create um, our project name. It does not have to match your Xcode project name. Just agree to these terms and hit create project. And for those of you who don't know, Firebase is like a backend cloud service that's run by Google. And it enables us to store data, store images, create users, authenticate users, do stuff like send push notifications. And it's really simple and easy to use. Um, it's the backend I use for almost all of my projects. So once that's done, go ahead and hit continue. And there's some steps we need to go through now. So you're gonna go here where it says add an app to get started and click on the iOS option. And now we need to get the bundle ID of our application. So hop back into our Xcode project, go to um, your project name up here and just go ahead and copy and paste this bundle identifier and paste it in there. Hit register app, you don't need to do these two steps. Okay, so now we need to download this Google service dash info dot plist. So go ahead and download that and then hop into Finder, um, go to Downloads, and you're gonna notice this Google service info plist file. Now, I've done this before, that's why I have this dash three. If you don't, um, you're good to go. You can go ahead and just drag that into your Firebase project. Um, but uh, I do have this, so I move it into my project folder um, so we can rename it because this, if you have dash and anything else, it's not gonna work. 
So I just actually insert this guy into my project folder like so, right? And now we rename it just like that and then move it into our Xcode project and go ahead and hit finish. Okay, so now that that's done, now your Google, your file should look like this. Okay, and if you go ahead and hit next. And now we need to open up our terminal. So this is a little intimidating, but don't worry. Um, just go ahead and get your terminal open. If you don't know how to do that, hit command space and then just search for terminal. Um, okay, so now what we need to do is uh, go into our project directory. So you can see mine is located in desktop inside of a folder called desktop and then create Firebase user. So we hit LS, it shows us where we are. Then we say CD for change directory, desktop, desktop. And again, I only do desktop twice because I have a folder called desktop and then LS and you can see all the folders you have open or available to you there. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste um, this project name here and then say CD and then just paste it and then say LS again and you're gonna see all this stuff here, guys. So I actually need to uh, delete this pod file here because I uh, have done this before. So now we're gonna say pod init, okay? And if we go back to our uh, finder, Hey, uh, where our project's okay, we're gonna see this pod file now. So go ahead and double click on that and open it up in text edit or whatever program you like. And we're gonna go here and underneath this line here, pods for project name, we're gonna say pod firebase slash core. And make sure you do these single quotes and then say pod firebase slash database and pod firebase slash auth. Make sure you guys add in every single one of these pods here. Make sure you save this pod file, okay? You can X out of it. And then uh, according to the instructions, we are going to go ahead and say pod install. So it's gonna install all these dependencies for us. And if you guys read this stuff, uh, no, nah, it doesn't say it there. But it, uh, basically what we need to do is we need to close out of this Xcode project and now we um, are gonna go back here and notice that we have this .xc workspace file. That's what we're gonna be using from now on. So go ahead and open that up and let's go ahead and continue with um, our code. Okay guys, so now you should have this .xc workspace file open. You should see this pods guy down here. And there is uh, one more step we need to do before we can uh, move on with our project. So open up Safari again. We're gonna hit next and we need to hop into our app delegate and say import Firebase and then this line of code right here. So let's go and go into our app delegate and you're gonna say import and you should see that module available now, import Firebase. Go ahead and hit command B to make sure you don't get any errors when you build your project. And it's working, it's working, it's working. And then just hop into this method here. And before we do any of this code, just go ahead and say Firebase app.configure. Okay. And then just go ahead and build your project again to make sure that's all good. And then we're going to hop back into Safari, hit next, right? And we need, they need to check and see if the app has communicated with our servers. Make sure you do not skip this step. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and run this project, launch it on our simulator. And this step should complete for us. So now that that's done loading, guys, this is the message that you should see come up in front of you. And this means that your app has successfully connected to the Firebase servers. So um, go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna hop into this authentication section. So go ahead, go there, and then hit set up sign in method. And for now, we're just gonna enable the email password method. Okay, so just click on that, hit enable, and then hit save. So now you should see that that says enable. Okay, and then we are gonna hop into our database and scroll down and say create database and then say start in test mode, okay? And then hit enable and now we are good to go. So this is where our data is gonna live for all our users and this is where our user authentication is gonna happen. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and sign up a user. So we're gonna have uh, go into our sign up controller and I'm gonna go ahead and go make a new section called API. 
and this is going to be called create this function is going to be called create user and then we're going to say with email email which is a string password which is a string and a username which is also a string okay okay so now what we're going to do is we need to go up to the top of this file and say import firebase okay so now we can go back down here and what we're going to do is say auth dot auth dot create user with email email oops make sure it's just email because that, that value we're passing in there password and then on this completion guy you're going to hit enter okay so we'll call this result and this error so first let's handle our error so we're going to say if let error equals error um, and then we're going to just going to say print um, failed to sign user up with error error.localized description okay so that's our error handling and then um, we also want to return out of this function if that happens we don't want it to keep going that's what that return statement does okay so now that we've done that um, give me one second. Okay, hop back in here. Now we need to get a user ID. Equal result dot user. So we have access to this user variable dot UID. Else return. Okay, so this is going to be a unique user identifier that's generated for us by um, this Firebase function here. So we're going to see where that comes in in a second. So now we're going to say this is how we get access to that database reference. So essentially, guys, what we're doing is we want to go to this location on the internet and then update and add some data in here. So it's going to look like uh, it's going to be like user, it's going to be some random string, right? Which is the unique user identifier. And it's going to be like email test at gmail.com and then username and it's going to be test. So this is essentially what our database structures are going to look like. So that's our UID. Now we need to create this dictionary here, right? So let's go back here and say database dot database dot reference dot child users. And then we're going to say dot update child values. And we are going to do that with a completion block. So hit enter on that. So we need these values really quick. So that's just going to be they look like this email and it's going to be uh, the email value that we pass in and then username username so that's our dictionary essentially that just gives us back this data that's what we're going to be writing to our database okay so now we can pass in those values there and then on this completion block hit error and then ref okay so uh, let's just go here, copy and paste this error function. Um, and then here we can say fail to update database values with error, right? Let me clean this up a little bit. Okay. So now, um, then uh, if this is successful, we'll just say print successfully sign user up. Okay, so now we need to go up to uh, this handle sign up function and we need to get the uh, values from our email, username, and password text field and then we're just going to call this function. So that's really easy. We're just going to say guard let email equal email text field dot text else return. Oops. And then guard let password equal password text field dot text and else return guard let username equal username text field dot text else return. Okay, so um, then we just call our function and pass in all those values. Create user with email password 
and using it. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and run this code and see if it works. And then we are gonna, oopsies, um, don't run that just yet, guys. Uh, here we need to say dot child UID, right? Because we notice this database structure is gonna go, oh, I should have added users there. It's gonna be users, then this UID, then these values. So we'll see what that looks like now. So now I'll go ahead and run this and let's see it working. So I'm gonna to go to sign up. Here I'm gonna say test at gmail.com. Username is gonna be test. Password just has to be six characters, guys. I just make it all cues to remember it. And then hit sign up. And then it says we successfully signed our user up, so we didn't hit any of our errors. And we're gonna go here and we can delete this guy now. We see that our data successfully updated in our database. Here's our user ID, email, username. And then if we go to our authentication, we see that this test at Gmail guy um, is now an authenticated user, right? So um, now what we wanna do is hop back into our login controller and add in the functionality to log our user in. Then we're gonna set up our home controller and we will be done. So just go over here. Um, make a section for our API. Say func log, uh, sign, or yeah, just say log user in with email, email, oops, <laughs> email, which is a string, password, which is a string. Again, go up to the top, say import Firebase. And uh, in this guy, let's just go ahead and create those var variables now. So just hop back into our signup controller, grab these two guys, copy, uh, go back here, this, and then let's call our function. So we're just say uh, log user in with email and password. Okay, so now let's go write this function out really quick. So we're gonna say auth, the auth, the, um, sign in and then find this option that says with email password and completion so we're going to say email password and hit that guy there okay so what are we going to do with this um completion so just go ahead and here and say result error make sure i spell result right then we're just going to say if let error equals error. We can hop back into our signup controller and just grab this guy. Change it around a little bit. Fail to sign user in with error. So that's looking good. And then here we can just say print successfully log user in. Okay. So um, we're not gonna worry about this right now um, because I'm pretty sure if we run our project, our user is already signed in and we don't have a means of signing them out right now. So um, let's just go ahead and try it and say um, test at gmail.com, one, two, three, four, five, six, login. Okay, yeah, I don't think that worked because uh, we're already signed in, right? Because when we hit that sign up button, it logs the user in for us automatically. So now what we're gonna do is start setting up our home controller, right? So let's hop in here and start coding there. Okay guys, so I'm here in our home controller and um, we wanna change up the functionality of our app a little bit before we move forward. So we actually wanna set our root view controller to our home controller. And then we wanna perform some API check in here or logic check to see if our user's logged in. And if they're not, then we're gonna present this login controller on top of that home controller. So let's go ahead and do that. And it's really simple. Um, all we have to do is go to where we set our root view controller and change that to home controller. And now we just go ahead and set up our home controller, right? So um, let me go over here. So there's some UI stuff we need to do. If you guys remember, there was like a label in the middle of there. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste that right now. It's called our welcome label. 
Okay, and then um, we are gonna go down here, set up our init mark. And then here we're gonna go and uh, set up our view. And then here we're gonna make our API call. So let's do that first, right? So we're gonna call this function authenticate authenticate spell that right yeah user and uh, configure view. okay so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna say if and we f first sorry we need to import Firebase and guys uh, to be clear what this does is it makes it so that our user doesn't have to log in every time it's only if they sign out do they get presented with the login page so we're gonna say if auth dot auth dot current user equals nil. Then we're gonna hop on to our main thread. So we're gonna say dispatch queue dot main dot async. And then what we're gonna do is present our login controller. And we wanna do this on the main thread. So um, it sort of does this before anything else happens in our view controller, right? So it's just like, yo, immediately if uh, this user is nil, don't do anything else except what we see in this block of code here. So um, what we're gonna do is present that login controller. So um, just go to our app delegate because we need this code here. Just gonna change it up a little bit. Oops, uh, home controller. Okay, so we're gonna say, login controller a bar style is black and then we're going to say self dot present nav controller animated is going to be true and completion is going to be nil okay so that's it for that and then um in this else block so this is what we're gonna do if we get our user back and essentially we're just gonna like configure our view and stuff. So we'll say func configure view components. And I'm just gonna copy and paste what I have in my completed project guys. Um, and then we will go ahead and talk about what's going on there. So we set our background color. We set this navigation item dot title which is gonna be up there. This is where we create our uh, navigation bar button to sign out. So if we double click on this guy, it should be that arrow there. We need to create this function. So let's see, mark selectors at objective C func handle sign out. And we'll do what we need to do there in a second. And then uh, apart from that, then we add our welcome label and center it in our view. So that's it um, for that, guys. Let's go ahead and run our project now and see what we get. And uh, of course, I forgot to call my function. So let's just go ahead and stop this. Then we're going to say authenticate user and configure view. Oh, we forgot to call our configure view components guy. So let's get that done. So that's good. It didn't present our login page because we have a user um, logged in already, right? So now we see that. That's looking good. Now we just need to uh, set up our navigation bar. So navigation controller. That navigation bar. That bar tint color equals UI color. Uh, main blue. Okay, so that's that. Okay, now we need to add the functionality for the sign out guy. So um, here's how we are going to do that. So um, here in our API section, we're going to make a function to sign out. And it's got to look like this. It's going to say um, do try off. Uh, oops. Dot sign out and this is gonna throw an error um, but first we are going to say uh, 
we're going to copy and paste this same code that we had here because when we sign out, we want that uh, login controller to get presented. So just go ahead and do that. And then here, um, we can say catch let error as, uh, and we don't need to do as, we can just say print um, failed to sign out with error. Okay, so that's how we sign out. Now we need to uh, go up to our handle sign out guy. And um, that's what this is gonna look like here. I have all this copy and pasted guys. It's just some more UI stuff. It's essentially going to present um, an alert controller for us. Um, that's an action sheet. So you guys can just pause the, uh, the project now or this video now and go ahead and type all that stuff out. So now let's go ahead and run our code and um, see what this looks like. So uh, it's looking good. Um, we haven't set up our label here yet, but we wanna see if we can sign out. So we sign out and it presents us with our login page. So now we need to hop back into our login controller and make this guy dismiss when uh, we have a successful login and do the same thing in our sign up controller. So it's gonna be pretty easy. We can just uh, get rid of that guy. And um, we're gonna say uh, self.dismiss animated true and completion is no. And we're gonna add some stuff to this in a little bit, um, but for now, that's all we're gonna do. So if it's successful, it just dismisses this controller and gives us our home controller, okay? So um, now uh, let's go ahead and run this application and see what we get presented with. We're, we signed out, so we should see our login controller pop up. So you notice that it was black for a second and then our login controller pops up. That's because uh, this function was hit. So it recognized that the current user was nil and then it performed this code here. So now we can go ahead and log our user in. And uh, okay, so I know why this isn't working. So um, it's because this view loads and then presents that login controller that this uh, function doesn't get called again. So we need to do some stuff in um, our login controller now to set this guy up. So let's go ahead and do what we need to do there. So hop back into our login controller and above this dismiss guy, we're gonna say guard let nav controller equal UI application dot shared dot key window dot root view controller as a UI navigation controller else user, okay? And then we're going to say guard let controller equal nav controller nav view controllers zero. And I'll explain all this in a second, guys. As home controller else return. And then we're going to say controller dot configure view components. Okay. So essentially, um, we're getting access to the root navigation controller because if you guys remember in our app delegate, our root our controller is a navigation controller and it has that home controller embedded in it. So then we access our home controller through that navigation controller and then we can access that function, right? So when we log in, it calls that configure view components function and gets us good to go. So we notice now if we were to run this, it's gonna stay on our home page because we have a user signed in. So that's looking good. All right, so now let's just go ahead and copy and paste this, go to our signup controller and do the same thing. Okay guys, and the final step is to configure that welcome message. So I'm gonna do that really quickly just cause this video is getting kind of long. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about this. Um, we're just gonna go into our API section in our, sorry, our home controller. So go here and guys go ahead and pause this video and type this function out. I'm gonna go over it really quick. So. Here we're getting our current user ID. Then we're going into our database and uh, we're basically going go here, go into the my current UID um, child and then find me this username value. Okay, so that's what all this stuff is doing. And then it's asking us to observe an event. And we do observe single event of that value and then we get back this snapshot. So that gives us back our data. This is where we cast that data or store it in a value and cast it as a string. And then we say self.welcomelabel.text equals that right there. 
Okay, and then um, we just animate it in nicely. And we just need to figure out where to call this function. And it's gonna be down here. Um, so if we have a user, then we're gonna say load user data. And um, let me uncomment this line really quick. And then if we run our project, we should see that welcome message popping up there. So that's looking really good, guys. That's the, uh, the project there. Um, so uh, just to recap everything really quick, um, we changed our review controller to this home controller. We performed this API call to see or check to see if um, our current user is nil. And if it is, we present our login controller. If it's not, we configure our view and load this user data. So um, that's the main, that's the, uh, the app there, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. I know this video got a little long, but this is a, a lot to cover. Um, it's a lot to do. Um, so and any time you guys need to create an app that um, needs some kind of login functionality, you can sort of use this as a template. It has a bunch of cool extensions and all the functionality you need to sort of drag and drop this into whatever um, app you need that requires a user sign up. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, again, the source code is free in the description. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, follow me on Instagram at learn iOS dev and um, support the channel by subscribing guys. Thank you. Peace out.